सब्सक्रैब मई चानल पी सरला the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson welcome to one more class of zoology today we are going to learn about the female reproductive system in human beings so female reproductive system in human beings is present in the lower abdominal region or the pelvic region so this is the pelvic region so here the female reproductive system is present female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries so these are the ovaries and a pair of fallopian tubules are the oviducts so these are the oviducts a pair of oviducts and a single uterus so uterus is a inverted pear shaped like structure so the neck like structure of the uterus is known as cervix so this is the cervix region so this cervix region opens into a broad structure which is known as vagina so this is the vagina cervix and vagina together form the birth canal so these are the internal parts of the female reproductive system so external parts which are known as external genitalia which consists of uh, vulva so this is the vulva portion so these are the different parts of the female reproductive system now let us study each one in detail first ovary so one pair of ovaries are present in so on in the lower abdominal region so these are the pair of ovaries so these ovaries are approximately 2 to 3 cm long so from here to here the if we measure it comes to 2 to 3 cm so the ovary is attached to the abdominal wall so ovary is attached to the abdominal wall by a peritoneal double layered peritoneal membrane so which is a transparent so this membrane is known as mesovarium so this is the mesovarium very close to the ovary okay next ovaries are covered by a germinal epithelium so the outer lining this is the outer lining is known as a germinal epithelium which is made by a simple cuboidal epithelial tissue so beneath this uh, germinal epithelium connective tissue capsule is present so the another line which is present uh, inner to the germinal epithelium so this is the one so which is known as a tunica albuginea okay so the connective tissue present inside the ovary is known as a stroma which is divided into two parts the external cortex and the internal medulla so the external cortex of the ovary consists of uh, ovarian follicles so all these are the ovarian follicles which are present at different developing stages okay so next the inner part is known as a medulla and this medulla is a loose connective tissue which consists of blood vessels so these are the blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels and the nerve fibers are supplied in the medulla region okay so this is about the ovary how many ovaries are present one pair of ovaries are present and these are known as primary sex organs next so so this is the ovary so this is the second part of the reproductive system which is known as fallopian tubule or the oviduct so it extends from ovary to the uterus so this is the ovary and the, this is the uterus so it is a connection between ovary and the uterus so it attaches to the abdominal wall so this is the fallopian tubule so it attaches to the abdominal wall by a peritoneal membrane which is known as mesolpinix okay so this is the mesolpinix very close to the fallopian tubule so these membranes are very transparent okay so the fallopian tubule or the ovary duct consists of three parts infundibulum ampulla and the isthmus so the outer portion of the infundibulum contains finger like projections so these are the finger like projections which are known as fimbri so by their undulating movements uh, they collect the liberated 
ovum from the ovary. So, this is the ovary which liberates the ovum during ovulation and these fimbriae collect the ovum and they send the ovum inside the infundibulum and it slowly moves towards the ampulla by a peristaltic movement because of the presence of ciliary epithelium inside the fallopian tubule. So, ampulla is the widest and the longest part of the fallopian tubule. In the examination you may ask, so which is the widest and the longest portion of the fallopian tubule? So, that is the ampulla. Okay. So, this is uh, the region where the fertilization occurs. The union of uh, ova and uh, sperm is known as fertilization. So, fertilization occurs in the ampulla region of the fallopian tubule. So, isthmus is a short and narrow tube which connects the fallopian tubule and the uterus. Okay. So, this is the uterus, so this is the isthmus region. So, this is about the fallopian tubule. So, in the fallopian tubule in the examination you may ask where the fertilization occurs. You have to write specifically the ampulla region. Okay. Next, uh, we move to the next part that is the uterus. So, this is the uterus region. So, uterus is a inverted pure like structure. So, it is divided into three parts fundus, body and the cervix region. Cervix means a neck like region. So, so, it is about 7.5 centimeters long. So, length is a 7.5 centimeters and thickness is 2.5 centimeters. It consists of three layers outer or external perimetrium, which is a thin epithelial tissue, and the middle myometrium. So, this is the middle myometrium region, which is thick and it contains a smooth muscle. So, it is highly muscular structure, and the innermost region is the layer is the endometrium. So, this is the endometrium. So, it is a glandular and it undergoes cyclic changes during the menstrual cycling. It is highly vascular. So, blood vessels are highly supplied to the endometrium region. So, middle region that is myometrium is a thick and it consists of smooth muscles, highly muscular structure. So, the contractions of these smooth muscles uh, are useful for the delivery. So, to expel out the baby that is the pasturation. So, the labor pains are due to the contraction of these smooth muscles. So, the cervix region consists of two openings. This is the internal os and this is the external os. So, the region between these two orifices is known as a cervical canal. So, cervical canal along with the vagina forms the birth canal. So, the baby moves from the cervical canal through vagina and comes out. So, that process is known as pasturation. So, uterus is attached to the, so uterus is attached to the abdominal wall by a peritoneal membrane which is known as mesometrium. So, this is the mesometrium. So, mesometrium, mesovivarium and mesolpinex all these together known as broad ligament. So, in the examination you may be asked what are the ligaments which at attaches uh, ovary, fallopian tubule and, and uterus. So, you have to write all these three. So, another ligament which attaches ovary to the uterus is the ovarian ligament. So, this is the ligament which attaches ovary to the uterus is known as ovarian ligament. Okay. Uterus is situated between the bladder and the rectum. Okay. So, you have to know the position of the uterus also. And this uterus, so uterus uh, opens into the vagina. So, this is the vagina opens into your vagina by a external os. Vagina is a large and the median fibromuscular tube that extends from the cervix to the vestibule of the external genitalia. So, it is highly, so the vagina is a highly vascular and opens into the vestibule through a vaginal orifice. So, this is the so, this is the vagina. So, the inner wall of the vagina contains non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelial tissue. So, 
this is the vagina okay the last part is the vulva so vulva is also known as external genitalia so it is present outside the body that's why it is known as a external it is a visible structure of the female reproductive system that's why it is known as external genitalia okay so the external genitalia is present in the pelvic region so this is the external genitalia so the depression which is present in, is known as the vestibule so this uh, depression part is known as the vest the green one this is the vestibule vestibule contains two openings this is the urethral opening and this is the vaginal opening so vagina opens into the vestibule by an opening which is known as vaginal orifice so this is the vaginal orifice and this is the urethral orifice okay so surrounding this vestibule two folds of uh, muscular tissue are present which are known as uh, labia so the inner one the smaller inner one the blue color one here is known as uh, labia minora and the large outer one is known as uh, labia majora so this is the labia majora and the blue one is uh, labia minora so here a fatty cushion like structure is present which is known as mons pubis here pubic hair is also present okay next so at the junction of the labia minora so these are the inner lips so at the junction of this a small erectile structure is present the yellow color one is known as a clitoris which is homologous to the penis of the males so above this clitoris uh, a hood like structure is present that is known as clitoris clitoral hood so this clitoris is highly supplied with the nerve fibers okay this is very sensitive portion so at the posterior position of the vaginal orifice uh, a pair of glands are present which are known as bartholin glands so these glands secrete mucus to keep the uh, vestibule region moist so another pair of accessory glands which are present below the urethral orifice are known as skin's glands so these are the skin's glands are the less vest lesser vestibular glands okay so these glands also secrete mucus so this is about the external genitalia or vulva of the female reproductive system so the accessory glands which are present in females are the bartholin glands and skin glands and the mammary glands so mammary glands are present in the thoracic region so a pair of mammary glands are present in the thoracic region which are also known as breads so these glands contains 15 to 20 so these are the 15 to 20 mammary lobes which contains uh, alveoli so these alveoli secretes the milk which is uh, Uh, under the control of the hormones after the childbirth these hormones are activated and they secrete the milk so these alveoli open into the like the mammary tubules so these mammary tubules are collected and open into a duct like structure which is known as a mammary duct so this mammary duct contains ampulla this is ampulla region so the dilation of a tubule is known as ampulla here the milk is temporarily stored and from the ampulla lactiferous duct which opens out through the nip so this is the nipple region so at the tip of the nipple lactiferous ducts open and the milk is uh, sucked by the child so below this nipple a brown structure is present which is known as a areola so in this areola region ampullae are present okay this is about the mammary glands so these mammary glands secrete the milk between this uh, mammary lobes fat tissue is present so the breast will develop after puberty and the size increases during pregnancy so this is about the accessory glands of the female so this is about the different parts of the female reproductive system i hope you understand happy studying